I've placed a tree to give me some reference of scale of the trees that are going to go in here. And I'll just leave that there because it gives me some idea of how big I want the trees in the background to get painted. Because they'll actually be going away and lower over this knoll into this valley. So they won't be as tall as this up here, but only as we come forward. So we'll do some in layers. And <clears throat> what I want to do is the ones at the very far background. And I used fan brushes. Got a wide, a large, and a, and a small one. And get some into the matte medium. And then I'm painting the using the, some green. I throw some paints gray into it to just to make it a little darker. A little bit of brown, dark brown, the umbra into that. Because I don't want a lot of rich color showing at a great distance. And just put some trunks up first. The key is not to go ding, 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 equally spaced or equal heights. These are just some guidelines, and these are the this this would represent the the. Uh, the trunk. As you can see, all I've done is paint the vertical trunks. And I've not been fussy about the look and how detailed. It's just a lot of random verticals. Some tall, some short. Some just stopping over the tops of the aspen that we painted a few minutes ago. And it gives me a sense of the massing. And so when we put that tree back in perspective, you can see there'll be some background fill on that. A lot of this won't even show through here as we mass some trees in there, but you will see between the trees here and there. So we have to be prepared for that. These background trees don't need an awful lot of detail. They just need the sense of shape. So continuing still with this small fan brush, which is pretty much loaded up, I take some of this green and I add a little bit of dark brown and a little bit of uh, black into it, just because you don't see a lot of the color. And just add a little bit more matte medium to it, just to thin it out and water it down a little bit. Don't use water because water will just make it too thin and runny. And then on, on some of the background ones in the far distance, on angles, just sort of brushing it down, just give it a little bit of shape. I'm just sort of f filling it in. Just sort of just going like there, 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 there. And you, you start to give some branching effects. Most of these are going to be covered, so I'm not with the foreground trees, so we're not trying to create a lot of density in the branching. Just let the brush hairs do the work. We're not trying to stroke and you know and, and create um, a mass of detail. You're just sort of brushing and stabbing more than anything else. You're just stabbing at the at the trunk and just giving little sweeps back and forth and what that starts to do now is is add a little more body to the trees and filling in some of the background a little bit more and and as we get in behind these trees here I can sort of just stab and, and what that does is start to give a little bit more density in there. It's almost a dry brush effect and you're just sort of brushing and scraping and, and you're adding some depth in behind here and you're creating uh, a nice contrast to the aspen in the foreground. So, you know, these trees are uh, 
filling in for the most part. And it's given a sense that there's more, de more trees and depth in the background. We want a little bit left of my original mural showing through you know, as this tree, as this hill comes through here. We, we don't need a lot. <clears throat> and then where these shrubs are here, we can just, small trees are just growing in. Now that I've got the majority of the uh, trees done, um, just taking a little bit of yellow, just a touch of lime green, a little bit of ochre, uh, Naples yellow, which I love, and you know, it's kind of a, a muddy, pale, light green. And still with the same brush, now I'm going to just put some highlights on to, you know, just to, just to pick up, uh, you know, the, 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 the light side of the tree, just to give it a little, a little bit of shape in those uh, dense areas here. Just sort of giving the giving the side of the tree that'll have a little bit of light onto onto it. Don't need to do an awful lot. It just it just gives it a three dimensional look. It's picking up the odd branch on each of these. Especially the, bo the bottom down here, and there's no way I'm trying to make these absolutely structurally perfect because they're going to be hidden anyway by a lot of the foreground trees. So this is just a little close-up of what we've uh, just accomplished. You can see the detail that is relative to the effort that's been put into it. I have the trees all made and I happen to have all these left over from my previous layout so I've got a lot of trees I can work with. They do need some work. Now there's very little room between the track and the mural in this area here. So what's going to happen if I put the tree here, the two problems occur. One is you get this channel between the tree and the wall so you've got this gap. The second issue is you get the tree actually cast a shadow on the wall and we don't want that. My solution to that is to take this tree and shave one half of the branches completely off right to the wire trunk and then I'll, I'll put contact cement on that. I'll then glue it to the wall and by doing so the tree is closer into the wall. In fact it becomes part of the wall and the second solution is, or result I should say, the second result of that is that the tree won't cast any shadow. It also leaves that much more room to get more foreground trees in between that to mass some trees in this very narrow area. So we'll do that next. The first uh, layer of trees have now been uh, shaved and applied directly to the backdrop. This area will have some shorter trees simply because they go over that knoll in the back corner there. Well now I've got most of the trees planted and you get quite a nice effect here as you can see. The train is actually going to go in between the trees both each side of the track. I put a little structure in the foreground amongst the trees and you get that real nice sense of a forest. I'll finish that road that goes up underneath the trail, the, uh, the bridge. And a rule of thumb is try and put clusters that are uneven numbers. And of course you can see that that nice mural we painted in the background with the hills and, and the aspens uh, are barely visible at all. Uh, you do see them in between the trees, uh, especially the pines that we painted. <clears throat> 